Hi everyone, my name is Katerina and you're listening to Silent Podcast. My guest today is Stefanie Kostadinova, a business strategist, management consultant and a polyglot known on YouTube and social media as Polyglot Secrets. A warm welcome to you, Stefanie. Thank you so much for having me. I, I'm loving being here. Great. So, uh, as I have mentioned in the introduction, you can be considered a polyglot. And therefore, my first question to you is, uh, could you please tell us how many languages do you speak and how did your passion for learning languages start? Yeah, of course. Um, well, I, I speak currently eight languages, um, two varying levels. I would say that I am fluent in five, so not all eight of them, but um, I do like learning languages. I find it really, like, I like the process of it. So I think that's the biggest thing for me. It's not so much the goal or the end destination, um, but I just truly enjoy the process of learning languages. And I... I've always liked it even back at school when I would uh, just study, like I started out with English and then added German as I progressed, but uh, yeah, it would just be these couple of languages and um, I, I loved it even back then before I knew that I could study by myself, but you know, as, uh, as school came to a close and actually even a bit earlier than that when I really wanted to learn Spanish but couldn't at school. Um, so, you know, both of those things, both like wanting to learn Spanish and then school coming to a close, influenced my passion because they were both these points of time in which I realized that I could learn languages by myself. And so that's, that's how I got really passionate about it when I started learning by myself because learning by yourself, it often means that you can just... Um, go for what you really like and what you're really passionate about and you kind of make your own adventure and so that's why it's um, much more engaging and for me that's that's what sparked the interest I really um, like doing that and I really like taking charge of my learning. Okay. So um, would you actually say that it's also influencing the time when someone starts learning the language in a way that when you were saying you started at school that's probably the time when all of us are somehow experiencing some personal development. So in that way, do you think that's the best timing for someone to start the languages or does does, it, does anything as a best or good timing for starting a new language exist for you? Uh, for me personally, it doesn't exist. Um, like a perfect time or something of the sort, I, I don't believe in that. And um, well, when it comes to actually scientific literature on the topic, there's a lot of unknowns. So it's not like research has confirmed things one way or another, but it is true that, that we can learn the language at any stage of our lives. And I firmly believe that I think the reason why sometimes you have children learn better, for example, is because especially in bilingual homes or when they move countries and um, other similar circumstances, you see kids really being immersed in the language with like meaningful input coming from all sides. And so if you're able to replicate that as an adult, it doesn't matter you know, how, how old you are, at what point you do it, as long as you get a lot of um, comprehensible input. It's a theory that's been spoken about a lot. Well, with language learning, most of it is just theories, but based on my own practice and um, speaking to other polyglots as well, I would say that most of us would agree that it's really about making sure that you're getting as much of real world input and it just seeing the language in action. And so that's why oftentimes people have this uh, conception that, you know, when you start early on, that you would be better when really in fact, usually when you start early on, you kind of get better inputs because adults, um, they rarely have this great input. Most of the time it's about the grammar tables and uh, charts. Um, most of the time that's the adult way of study, which isn't as effective as the English way of study. So I think that's where a lot of the misconception comes from. But at the end of the day, just to sum up the answer to the question like really quickly, it's um, I don't believe there's the best time. You can start at any time and be successful. Uh, you have mentioned some other polyglots when you are in the company of other polyglots. And I have had the chance to see some of your videos on YouTube when you were talking 
um, with other polyglots about learning new languages. Is there any uh, specific advice or something which you wish you have known earlier when you were starting a new languages that you could maybe tell to our listeners? Yeah, I, well, there are several. I think the biggest one for me would be that you don't need anything in particular. You don't need anything special because when I was younger, I thought that you need somebody to teach you a language, which isn't necessarily true. You can go that route if you want to, but if you don't want to, if it doesn't work with your schedule, if you're super busy and you can't go to classes or something like that, then you can certainly do really well uh, by yourself. And that's actually my preferred method, as I mentioned. So I wish somebody told me that earlier because I realized that when I was, um, I believe, 16 or 17, um, that's when I, it dawned on me that, oh, I can do this by myself. Before that, I didn't know. And it sounds simple, but I think many of us assume that you need formal instruction. So that's one thing. Another thing is um, that I wish I knew earlier what power input has. So I didn't, you know, I didn't necessarily know as a, as a child that if you like watch a lot of movies in another language, that can help so much with your reading um, and with your listening and with everything at the same time, and like with the way you speak. And then I, I wish somebody told me that listening to podcasts could be super useful or reading the news in another language, you know, just all of those things that you wouldn't think are that beneficial. I mean, usually we associate... I don't know, movies which just kind of entertainment and that's it. But at the end of the day, there's so many activities that are um, quote-unquote pleasurable, like leisure activities that can actually be great for sight. So that's also something that I wish I knew about earlier. Okay, and thank you for this. Um, well, to change the subject a little bit, because uh, SciLang is a podcast not only about languages, but also science and some academic background and uh, I know you have studied business and can classify yourself as a management consultant. Um, is there any difference of the services you provide as a consultant when it comes to a language you provide those or do you actually work in one language? How do you have it? Can you please give us some details on this? Yeah, um, currently I work for one company, so um, I do a lot of internal consulting and internal strategy, so I don't necessarily um, have that many inquiries coming from different countries. I am not actively working as a freelance consultant, like that is something that I'm open to, but um, I'm currently quite busy and I'm not seeking it out. So if I were seeking it out, I, I wouldn't really... Um, it wouldn't matter as much to me what a language consulting is done in. Um, so I would say that currently the way that I, the, I do a lot of the work that I do in English because um, I work for this company that's quite international. Like we have offices in several countries. And so as a result, um, you know, ling English is the global lingua franca. It's like you kind of have to work in it. But there's been a lot of times in which I've had to evaluate certain um, certain aspects of I don't know, market studies or things like that, where it's extremely useful to actually use a local language. For example, if you're looking at strategy for a specific country uh, in which we do business, and it's, so it's much easier if you actually know that language because a lot of the information isn't available in English, for example, or sometimes you'll come across... Um, a financial statement that you're interested in and it's going to be in the language in which which is spoken in the country in which the company is headquartered and so i i feel like a lot of the times i don't have these barriers that i would have in my work otherwise um, because you know usually you have to kind of find a translation or find a way around it and a lot of the times like when you're working with very high volumes of information it can be just so much faster if you just know the languages um, so that's been quite helpful but at the end of the day the output i produce is in english but when it comes to doing the research that i do um, speaking languages can be useful yeah that's a really interesting answer but definitely true one i have the same experience when studying so sometimes it's easier to find 
So as I do study business as well, to find a source, to find a source in the mother language and then to use the information. Uh, do you say, uh, sorry, do you think there is uh, some advantage of speaking a different language when it comes to uh, relations at work, when it comes to talking to other colleagues? So not only that you can benefit from sources of a different language, but that there is some advantage or can be either a disadvantage when you can speak the language as your colleagues do, if this is not an English? Yeah, absolutely. I actually haven't really experienced any disadvantage, um, so I can't really comment much on that part, but I, I have experienced a lot of advantages in the different jobs that I've had before, um, where especially that were like in more international places, um, like New York, for example, then there it can be like super useful. Right now, uh, I'm based out of Bulgaria, so there's not as much of uh, You know, you don't need as many people uh, of different uh, cultures, but especially in the like more international cities where I've lived and in other jobs that I've had, I've experienced a lot of benefits from this. It's just that you connect with people on a much deeper level. And I think it, it's something that's been repeated quite a lot, but it's because it's true. It is just, um, there's like this barrier that immediately falls off and people just feel much closer to you when you speak their native language and so you're able to connect better with your colleagues but not just with colleagues also with potential business partners and customers i remember this time when i um, was working um, for this company for like i was responsible for the latin american region and at the time i didn't speak portuguese but i spoke spanish so i was able to connect with Um, like Spanish speaking people in the Latin American region much better, like potential business partners much better than with potential business partners in Brazil because uh, yeah, back then I had no idea about Portuguese. So I could see immediately the difference of just, you know, because I was using the exact same materials, I was talking to people the exact same way, but just by virtue of like speaking in somebody's native language versus not, um, that That really influenced my business success. And then, of course, also on a personal level, as I mentioned with colleagues, uh, just forging relationships was easier. Um, so, yeah, I would say that I've only seen advantages from that, and I, I think it's great. Yeah, thank you. This is like a very interesting example, especially as you said, that the people open themselves more to you. Do you actually think a language is a part of someone's personality in a way that you can have a multiple different yourselves, let's say, uh, because you can speak more languages than your mother language? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's a very contentious topic, I'd say, because there's a lot of different opinions on it. And I, there was this, um, I, I cannot remember who said that, but there's a quote that like you know, every language that you speak is kind of like living another life. And then other people would say that, well, no, really, you're the same core person, no matter what language you speak. So I feel like there's a lot of back and forth, um, but I do feel a difference personally. I don't know what the truth is, but for myself, I do feel a difference when I speak different languages. And even if it doesn't pull out different personalities in you that much, I think that it really influences the way you think. And there's actually been a lot of research done on that, I think, um, in terms of, you know, how language influences your way of thinking. Um, it's a very deep topic. I love to de delve into it in general, but just to give a few examples of like what I've come across um, from, you know, scientists that have done research on this, There's this very interesting research about I don't know, like perceiving the color blue and how Russian speakers are much more quick in studies to perceive it just because their language distinguishes between different blues in a way that most languages don't. Or, for example, the way that people uh, think of time and distance because of the language they speak or the way that they think of guilt. Because in, in English, for example, the way we assign guilt is like he broke the vase. And mm -hmm. in many other languages, the way that it works, like the vase was broken, which is kind of in a passive construction, is a much more common. So that influences how quick people are to assign guilt in different based on the modern language that they speak. Um, I've, I've come across other examples as well, like um, 
different ways that it influences your brain and for example some languages that in which a lot of the present tense is used to express the future people tend to be much more um, frugal with their money and other interesting studies like that that really show how your language can influence your way of thinking so Sure, even if your personality doesn't dramatically change when you speak another language, it's just that when you do speak another language, the way that you think can change. And so, yeah, I think that there is actually a little bit of proof around that. And then many of us actually experience feeling different when we speak another language. Mm, those are really interesting examples. Thank you for sharing those. And would you then say that uh, you often catch yourself thinking in a language that's not your mother language? Yeah, actually, I don't. Uh, I usually don't think in my mother tongue a lot. Uh, I mostly think in English. And that's, I think that's normal because it's the language that I use the most for my work. It's the language in which I got my education. And so it's like a lot of the times, actually, I feel much more comfortable talking about business in English than in Bulgarian, my mother language. So um i do think most of the time in english sometimes like you said uh it can be in multiple languages because some things just come to me that in my head that are not translatable in english or in bulgarian or something because there's always expression in other languages that don't translate so sometimes it's a mixture most of the times it's either going to be i'm going to be thinking in english or in a mixture of languages it's very rarely like only my mother tongue or something like that. Okay, and um, I think you have mentioned it already before, but um, you said that people are actually expecting to know English, that it's the language we all use to communicate when we meet new people. We don't know what other languages we might have in common. What's your attitude to this? How do you feel about that? everyone is, let's say, not strictly forced, but in some way forced to speak English. Yeah, so I think it's normal to have this global language that is just used for um, many things around you know, business and science and different fields like that, just so people can understand each other. And it's just, you know, we can't all, like, speak speak all of the languages of the people that we want to talk to it's um it's just not practical and possible so it's useful to have a language like that and yeah it's always going to be some language you know before english i believe it was french um centuries ago it was latin there's always going to be like a lingua franca in the world i believe and it might change but Uh, it's something that is needed and useful, and I don't find anything wrong with that. The thing that I haven't liked before is whenever somebody comes out and says, well, why are you bothering to study other languages? The whole world speaks English. And I've actually been asked that question like more times than I, than I want to remember. So it's, uh, that is what I dislike about it. It's not the fact that English is used globally and it's like, that's okay. It's like we all need a language that can be used when we don't speak each other's languages. But, you know, when it becomes to the point of um, just this language dominance and people are like, well, why bother? Then I don't like that type of attitude. I think if you did like, you wouldn't be a polyglot and you wouldn't be studying yeah. any, <laughs> any more languages. And um, actually on the topic of learning more languages, I had another question for you. And that's uh, from my own experience. I know that I do speak currently Czech, English, and I'm some way on the advanced level of German, let's say. And it's still happening pretty often when I come across with, two, in a, with a new German word, let's say. I have in my had a connection firstly to the Czech, to Czech, then I can find an English equivalent. For example, when I have to do some translations from German to English or the other way, would you say your mother tongue or English plays this role or can you, from the all languages you speak or you're con currently learning, uh, do you have just some certain combinations, how you can translate from one into another one, or does it go, does it flow easily with all of those? 
Um, I would, I think it flows because I've never noticed any language that plays that role before. So it's it's something that I I don't think that there's one that that I default to and that I just kind of connect a translation or something of the sort. Sometimes a word will pop when I can't think of it in one language. Will pop in a very in one that like there's no way to predict which one. I have another question on a very different topic to this, and uh, that's related to technology around the language and uh, all the language translators uh, we are currently using. And uh, I would like to ask you, what do you think that will happen to these in the future? Will that maybe motivate people more to learn languages or, on the other hand, demotivate those that they can be just living with a Google translator or similar translators without any specific knowledge of languages? How do you feel about this? Yeah, so this is getting better and better, and I'm not sure to what extent it will become um, uniform in the future and like to what extent we'll be able to access it, because the way it is right now, it's, it's really difficult to actually have any meaningful conversation using those. Uh, it's mostly about... I mean, of course, you can have probably an email using those, but you don't know actually how correct it is or like what it's spitting out because a lot of the times it's um, when you're trying to translate something using those tools, it's extremely difficult. If you don't already have some working knowledge of the language to know if what you're getting is correct or if you should use one of the other options because many times, especially good tools, will give you several options. And so there's a lot of nuance that's very hard to catch. And they can be a great prop for language learners, but for somebody that doesn't speak the language, it can be very challenging um, to, to use those to good effects. So the way that they are right now, they're not, I don't think translation tools are great props to replace language learning. I don't know what will happen in the future. I know that there's like a lot of work being done right now with AI recognizing speech patterns and, you know, Uh, going back with a sentence and translating it in our language. So maybe that would just be revolutionary in the future, and who knows? Um, perhaps people will not be as motivated to learn when that happens. But I think that in any case, a lot of the nuance and the connection that you get with authentically speaking a language is something that cannot be replicated no matter how good uh, those tools get. So I think it will depend on people's reasons for speaking a language because if you are just um, if you want to simply translate some document and you don't really care about it, translating tools are just gonna demotivate you. You're not gonna need to learn a language. But if you if you want to connect with um, I don't know your family in France, then maybe you know those tools will never matter to you. And so yeah, it really depends on the goals. But in any case. Right now, they're not great, I would say. But let's see what happens, because there's just so much um, advancement that's happening in that field. Yeah, <clears throat> that's also true that we can just predict, but we might listen to this a few years from now and have a good laugh on our predictions or not. Um, yeah. You have mentioned um, that for writing an email or so, these technologies or translators can be sufficient. Um, from your personal experience, do you think there is a difference? Uh, we are often taught some strict rules of a language or so, but then we might go abroad to somewhere where people actually do speak a language and we are surprised how those simple mm -hmm. rules change in the practice. Have you experienced anything like that? Yeah, of course, there's there's always a difference by, you know, the formal way of speaking and then, you know, the way that people speak on the street. And I've experienced that quite a few times. And in particular, um, for example, with Spanish, because I did work in Spain for almost a year. And so the way that I spoke Spanish was just very influenced by all of the reading I'd done. And moving to Spain just meant that you learn a lot of slang and everything. And I've had a lot of um, interactions with um, other Spanish-speaking people, but mostly Latin Americans. So, of course, when you go to a new Spanish-speaking country, all of the slang, all of the expressions, the way that people speak, and like 
the rules just change completely and I would say that with spoken language um, it is you kind of when you know the formal language you can sound a bit weird in the beginning to the locals but they know you're a foreigner they know that you don't know their slang words so they're super receptive to that even if you sound a little bit formal and it's something that is quite easy to pick up um, when you are communicating with people that you know do speak that way and I, I have found that it's not um it's not a handicap it's most of the time it's like it's okay you'll learn it it's not it doesn't take much time and usually it is something that is much um that actually differs depending on what country you're going to because a lot of the times it's it really depends um, not so much on the language as on the different not even country but sometimes region of a country can change so quickly so that's something very changeable and that's something that that i have experienced quite a few times and and i think it's uh it's totally fine and people are usually very understanding about it your answer was very interesting to me that you said that when people know you are a beginner of the language as they see from the way how you speak they are tolerant because from my experience it happened to me multiple times that I try to speak a local language and mm -hmm. people or in my, my concrete example it was German and people started replying to me automatically in English as a oh, kind yeah. of offense okay. have you experienced anything similar to this yeah. and how do you feel about yeah, it yeah. I mean yeah usually the way that I think it also depends in the country on the country because sometimes especially in some countries people are more inclined to, to answer in English than others because in some countries also like the level of English is much higher than others so yeah that's certainly happened to me and um, usually yeah what I was referring to before is that they're understanding especially when you speak formally but they, they can see you speak so if you don't know their slang that's fine but they see that you speak the language so they don't usually re revert to english in that case but if they see that you're struggling a little bit with the language then sometimes they revert to english and i've had that happen and it can be very frustrating because sometimes you want to practice the language but people are switching back to english because they just find that it's easier um so i certainly experienced it and i usually i try to to stay within that language, you can just reply within that language or you can just be like, hey, well, I'm trying to practice, this is why I would prefer to speak in um, language X and not in English. So it's something that you can ask for and I have asked for it. Sometimes even after you ask for it, people just keep replying in English and so there's not much you can do about it. It really depends on the person and sometimes, especially if you're in a non-english speaking countries sometimes people will reply to you in english because they want to practice english themselves so you never know where the other person is coming from but um, yeah, it's a fine, fine way to walk i think this is a great message to not only me but all the listeners not to give up and be pushing the language you want to improve it because i also sometimes give up and start talking to those in english especially when As you said, they are still that I tried once or two times to use the German and they mm. are just like replying in English. Um, I think our time is almost over. So I would like to thank you for such a lovely discussion we had. It was a pleasure to meet you and speak to you. And uh, I would also like to thank to all our listeners and I hope... Uh, They have learned something new when listening to you and the uh, Silent podcast. And uh, if those enjoyed it, or if you did enjoy it, you can share this episode with your friends or colleagues or other polygots. And uh, we will look forward to next time. Thank you so much for having me. I really enjoyed that. And I, I love the idea behind the podcast. So keep going and keep sharing this wonderful knowledge. Thanks a lot.